Now, my next guest went viral during lockdown over the past 18 months with her hilarious voiceovers of political moments like this. Uh, why are they all shouting? They don't sound very happy. Uh, there's Nicola. She'll, she'll be nice. Now, that's what they call a good Scottish welcome, Boris. Listen to the Scottish people. They really hate you. Absolutely hate you. Listen, who's this guy? What's your name? Don't know you. And, right, come on, Bodgers. And, and, put your arm down. It's my house. <laughs> they hate you, man. Bodgers, I love it. Well, Nicola Sturgeon sent Janie a message of support last week after she revealed on social media she's been diagnosed with ovarian cancer. She joins me now from her home in Glasgow. Janie, it's so lovely to see you. I was very, very sorry to hear the news because you knew something was wrong, but you weren't quite sure what it was. You just kind of, you were on tour, weren't you? So you just kept going. I, I was on I was in London and I remember walking through Soho from the Leicester Square Theatre and the, the tour has sold out and I had this horrible pain in my stomach and I couldn't really eat because every time I went to eat I felt full and I was bloated. I looked about seven months pregnant. I kept on touching my tummy um, and weeing all the time, all the time. And it, I just didn't feel right and exhausted. Oh my goodness, I could have slept all the way through the night, right up till it was time to go on stage, two hours on stage, and then back to bed. So something was definitely wrong, Lorraine. So who told you to go to the doctors or did you just think, do you know what, I really have to, I really have to do something here? Well, when I got home from London, I called my GP and she got me in and she had a feel around my tummy and she said, I can feel something. And she took some blood tests and the very next day I got the results of the blood test, which showed there was a hormone there that was problematic. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, the pain was pretty bad and I went into the hospital that day. And as soon as I went into the hospital, they'd done a, um, a scan with a thing and then they did a CAT scan and they discovered um, a sort of sac there on my ovary um, and they said you know this is ovarian cancer oh, and it, it just happened all so quick and and the worst of all is we all have COVID as well mm -hmm. bizarrely I'm the healthiest in the house I'm like an Alsatian Doug cult laddie for castle milk I'm absolutely fine my husband and my daughter are absolutely floored with COVID. So I haven't really had time to process it all because I've been looking after them um, and they've been really sick. So I've been worried sick about them more than I have about this, bizarrely. And I know you being you, you are trying to put the best possible spin on it. You do have a sense of humour about it. You're trying to make it easier for all the people around you. Yeah, I, I would like to, yeah, it's one of those things you, you, you'd you never prepare yourself for somebody saying, um, we've discovered cancer. You, there is no preparation for that. So you just have to go on with what you're doing and all, and I can't get the operation for seven weeks um, because of the COVID. So I'm trying hard to mentally prepare myself, but also speak out about it, you know, and if, if, People, if women are out there and you're feeling full and when you eat, there's a pain here and if you're weeing all the time and you're exhausted all the time and there's these rogue pains in your tummy, please don't ignore it. Don't do what I did and go, well, I'll wait till the end of the tour and then I'll see what happened. But I didn't. My agent said, no, stop now. Stop now, get this scene to. And I did. And my instinct and his instinct were right. Uh, and I, I had to let an awful, awful lot of people down. But, you know, my health comes first. No, that's, of course it does. Good... And you can always do the tour again. That's the thing, you know, once you get this operation and it, and it goes well, fingers crossed, everything's going to be all right. Once that happens, you can always tour again. That, that, that's yes. the thing. And, and people will completely I'm dying understand. I'm on stage. I feel fine. I want to get back on stage. I know. I feel, as though, I feel as though this is just a thing and I'll be able to just deal with it. I just want to get out there and, and, and do my thing. But I'm also very aware that I have to I have to prepare myself because it is a big operation. You know, it, it's not keyhole surgery. It's, it's the foul 
it's the full Monty, so I have to prepare myself mentally and physically, and I'm taking all that advice as, as we go. No, of course, and it's difficult because you, I know the family aren't well, but you've got to have these tough conversations, and that's hard, and I know you, so I know you'll try and, 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 and make it light-hearted if that's possible, because that's the I way have. sometimes you deal with it. I have been doing that. I've been telling, I, I mean, straight away, I got my will sorted and my power of attorney. I did that from the hospital. I phoned the lawyer and got all the paperwork in order. And I told Ashley, if anything happens and the worst happens, please don't play rubbish songs at my funeral. <laughs> and she was laughing. So we've we've had a very honest, funny and open conversation about this. And I think it's important I'm one of these people that faces things kind of head on. I try not to bury it away and go, let's not. And all my friends have been so supportive. You know, they've all been on the phone and we've all been chatting. But because I'm isolated, um, I've been getting food delivered. God bless you, Sebbies. God bless everybody who's been feeding me because we can't leave the house because of the COVID. Oh, Janie, it's a tough, tough time, but you will you will absolutely get through it. And I think it's brilliant that you're telling everybody, you know, telling women that they... Any, any symptoms like that, for goodness sake, get checked out. Don't put it behind you. Look, what Janie was saying, the symptoms there, the stomach pain, the bloating, feeling full, needing to go to the loo all the time and just feeling... It's not just tiredness, Janie, is it? It's just bone-weary, no, uh, absolutely exhausted. Uh, it was sheer exhaustion. And people, you always make... You always cover up for it. You go, well, I'm 60, I'm a comedian, I'm on tour, obviously I'm going to be tired, but I knew that wasn't my level of energy. My energy is so... And I, I am a really strong, healthy person. Luckily, I have got a really good record um, of being very strong and healthy, so I knew there was something. So if anybody's listening and you have these symptoms, get them checked. I know it's difficult during COVID and the NHS are under a lot of stress, <clears throat> but excuse me, but uh, they have been amazing. They have have just been amazing, the NHS. They have, indeed. You take care of yourself. Thank you for coming Thank in and talking about this and making sure that the, the word gets spread because, um, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one, ovarian cancer, to actually, die, you know, to know the symptoms of it. So thank you for that message. Thank you. And stay well. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Right, if you're worried at all about ovarian cancer, helplines are available, of course they are, on the ITV website. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.